You're watching the world news here on Press TV. U.S. protesters have converged on the White House, where President Donald Trump was hosting a traditional iftar for Muslims in the fasting month of Ramadan. When Muslim rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When Muslims are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! The rally dubbed Not Trump's Iftar was organized by several Muslim civil rights groups that boycotted the event. Protesters said Trump's continued targeting of Islam and its followers made engagement with his administration futile. They argued that the U.S. president's heated rhetoric has contributed to an increase in bullying and discrimination against Muslim Americans. Demonstrators also accused Trump of hypocrisy. We're here protesting the White House iftar that was announced earlier over the weekend. Um, we think it's the height of hypocrisy for Donald Trump to ban Muslims with one hand and then invite uh, elite diplomats into the White House to break fa fast with them. Uh, Donald Trump does not stand for Muslim values and time and time again um, he stood up against Muslims. Now the protesters held an iftar outside the White House in a sign of protest. Trump hosted the event in the state dining room. He did not hold a similar event in his first year in office at a break with past presidents. The White House said up to 40 people attended the event. Trump is frequently engaged in inflammatory anti-Muslim rhetoric. During the 2016 presidential campaign, he vowed to ban all Muslims from entering the U.S. and proposed the idea of Muslim registry. After taking office, Trump in one of his first acts imposed a travel ban on several Muslim-majority countries and indefinitely suspended the U.S. refugee program. Let's speak to Jacob Music. He's a host of a Voice of the Revolution Radio, and he joins us via Skype from Orlando. Many thanks for joining us here on Press CV, uh, Mr. Music. Now, it's clear uh, that this PR stunt by the White House has not gone as well as it planned. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure why they would have thought it would have gone very well. You know, as the um, clip, uh, the person in the clip did mention, it's a very small select group of elite diplomats. That's who he is cozy with in terms of Muslims, they're elites. But the actual elite of the Muslim civil society groups in the United States, which are composed of those very protesters who are opposing it, Yet the Muslims in the United States are not comfortable with him, nor are their leaders. You know, like you had mentioned, he has said um, and proposed many policies that are very discriminatory. It can be argued that it's not racism against African Americans, but it, it is prejudice against Muslims, no matter where they come from, that is actually the biggest problem of discrimination when it comes to the rhetoric of the president. You know, on Fox Business and Fox News, he's made many statements, including that he would like to, cl he would consider closing mosques, that he would register Muslims. He called Muslims sick people. Uh, like you mentioned, he had the what he actually called a Muslim ban to his now lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. I think it's very clear that he has a very low opinion of Islam and Muslims. He has said that on 9-11, American Muslims living in New Jersey uh, were cheering as the as the towers fell down. This is patently untrue. We don't have any evidence that people, American Muslims, were celebrating this American tragedy. He's casting aspersions and has been and has used those to gain power. And it's unfortunate that, that he's painting Muslims and has painted Muslims as a potential fifth column in the United States. So the Muslim civil society groups and Muslims in the United States have no reason to join him in this iftar. Right. So, Mr. Music, would you like to take a guess as to why this year Donald Trump has decided to actually hold this iftar, considering he's been very vocal about what he feels when it comes to Muslims and Islam. You know, he's such a hard person to try and understand the motives behind what he does. Um, you know, he's often done reversals and policies, reversals and the different things that he's saying in his positions. It, it probably was one of his advisors who said, yeah, maybe you should do this because people are thinking you're anti-Muslim. And he said, OK, I'll do this. And, you know, you know, the ambassador to Kuwait and the ambassador to UAE, ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Oh, you know, those are his friends, people he loves, you know. OK, let's get together with them. I mean, this isn't some sort of actual cultural experience. He's not immersing himself. Obviously, the Muslim civil society groups, they are not going to meet with him and they're not because they, they don't want to. They feel like he's prejudiced. So this is not some cultural event where he will gain any knowledge about the Muslim community. And before I let you go, Mr. Music, of course, uh, this obviously goes back to 
what this White House, this current administration represents, um, which is uh, a problem of racism, of Islamophobia, which has been very evident in the policies that have been adopted, both inside and uh, foreign policy. Absolutely. So he's, you know, in his presidency, he has continued um, besieging parts of the Muslim world, um, Afghanistan and Iraq in particular, as well as invading Syria. So, but, but I think that it's not a race issue. You know, Islam is one of the largest religions in the world. It is pan-racial. I think it doesn't matter whether a person would be a white, a black, an Arab, a Persian, um, an, an Asian, an African Muslim. I think that he does does look down on Muslims regardless of their background. But he has definitely targeted the Muslim majorities in the Arab and the Turkish and, and Persian areas of the world. All right, let's leave it there for now. That's Jacob Music, host of Voice of the Revolution Radio, joining us via Skype from Orlando. Mr. Music, it's always great having you with us here on Press TV. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.